Hello everyone, this is Morgan, back with another YouTube video after probably years of not making one. It has been a super long time because life sort of gets in the way of this sort of thing, and you know, I've been in college trying to get that degree, and uh, you know, it's, it's hard to devote time to making YouTube videos when you have other things going on. But, you guys already know this, and I'm sure you understand, but why is Morgan, the guy who makes YouTube videos about music, why, why is he coming back making a video about artwork? And that is the question. Today, uh, the reason I'm coming at you with a video of me doing a tattoo flash sheet is because I'm, this is what I've been doing with my life as of late. St I mean, I still engage with music and I still try to keep up with, uh, you know, releases and everything, but uh, it's just not where most of my mental energy is devoted at this point in my life. Like, I, for several different reasons, which I'll get into later on in the video, uh, I've just been focusing on my artwork as much as I possibly can. Uh, and, you know, as a result of that, some things fall by the wayside. Uh, and for a while, my YouTube channel was included in that list of things. So what we're doing here today is a, a flash sheet. And if you've never heard of a flash sheet, it is a design sheet for a tattoo shop essentially if you've ever been to a tattoo shop i'm sure most of you probably have at some point at least been into one you will have seen hopefully uh designs in sheets all over the walls sometimes you know even all over the ceiling and everything a good shop is only as good as its flash on the walls in my opinion and this sheet is uh you know it's not for any specific shop because i don't work at a tattoo shop but that is the idea behind uh, this piece of artwork. Now, the reason a tattooer would make a sheet of designs like this is obviously so that uh, the clientele of said tattooer would know uh, the type of work that the tattooer likes to do, which generally is the type of work that the tattooer will be best at. But the reason I am doing it as someone who is not a tattooer is because I actually really want to become a tattoo artist. And in order to become a tattoo artist, there is a long process of getting an apprenticeship, finding an artist who, you know, believes in you and thinks that you will become a good tattooer and provide value to whatever shop they work at. And the way that you get an apprenticeship to become a tattooer is by presenting a portfolio of artwork. And generally that entails doing a lot of flash and making a lot of tattoo designs. The style I'm working in currently is American traditional. And mostly that has to do with, um, you know, copying designs from old tattooers from you know anywhere from the 20s 50s 60s 70s whatever but mostly i'm working in this traditional style because it's a style that appeals to me and it's also just generally a style of tattoos that lasts very long and is always readable from across the room and i think that's what a tattoo should be so here you'll see in the video what i'm doing i am going over my pencil drawing with uh, a little quill pen that i dip into my ink and this is a very finicky pen, but I do believe that it is worth using because when you use it, there's actually a, a texture from the ink on the paper. You feel it's like a raised line. So you, the, there's a more tactile element to using this pen as opposed to using a micron or you know some other. And as you'll see, it also provides uh, some very nice sounds that if I were an ASMR channel, uh, I would be focusing on really the sound that this pen makes as it drags across the paper. And I'll show you that in a second here. Now that that is one of the many reasons that I choose to use a quill, but uh, among other things, it, it just really f forces the artist to have a steady hand, and I think that's really important because a lot of the tools that we generally use, like for instance the iPad is the most extreme example, there are a lot of ways that uh, a tool can help hide an artist's mistakes, and this pen sort of makes you really focus on every line that you're drawing and it forces you to um, r really carefully consider the, even just the angle that you're approaching the paper from with the pen. Like you can't really, you know, scrape the paper side to side with the pen. 
because it will, um, since it's a quill pen, it has two little barbs at the end of it, and little bits of paper will actually get stuck between the barbs and ruin your, your lines. So moving on to the dragon up in the top left of the sheet, uh, this is actually a sheet that I made probably eight or nine months ago digitally on my iPad, uh, just doodling around and trying to come up with cool designs because especially at that time, I was really still trying to figure out how to create a traditional tattoo design. Uh, and this, you know, this sheet is a slightly revised version of the sheet that I made on the iPad. Uh, and it will obviously be very different uh, because it's made on paper with quill and with ink and everything. So you see uh, a giant, sorry, my cat just jumped up on my lap. We uh, currently have four cats in the house and one of them has allergies and she is quite sneezy today. In fact, she coated my desk in cat snot probably five minutes ago. And you can probably hear her sniffling right there in the background. But regardless, uh, we're gonna continue. There, there's the sheet. Oh, it looks so nice and good. It actually does look far better uh, to me than the digital version did because generally, especially when it comes to tattoo designs, uh, there is a sterility and a cleanliness that I find very unappealing uh, from a digital drawing of a tattoo design. It just seems fake and it, it just it doesn't come across as a tattoo design, in my opinion. So here we're gonna be uh, making the border and this is something that I find really fun uh, with regards to Tattoo Flash is just how do you really maximize the amount of space you have without trying to go super complicated with the designs themselves. And here I'm doing my little checkerboard thing I've done for the past couple of sheets. You notice I just put my hand around the corner. I, that was me counting every single square. I count just to make sure that I didn't have any uh, areas where there would be two blacks or two whites in a row. And of course I tried to get smart and I ruined it. So I had to go over it with the white paint, which is very inconvenient. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and do a stain with some coffee from you know my local cafe, Rev Coffee Roasters. That's where my girlfriend works. So I, I got some espresso and iced coffee, mix it together. It's a little different every single time. It will always be a different shade of brown. Uh, to me, that's you know kind of an appealing thing. I like the sort of uh, variability because it's sort of organic and I'm doing this to uh, mainly to provide the illusion of a skin tone so that the designs read how they would as an actual tattoo rather than just my colors on a white piece of paper because no one has skin that white and I know there are obviously you know a million different skin tones you could have but this is not an exact science what I'm doing here with the coffee I'm simply trying to, uh, you know, separate the designs from the white background. I, I just like it. I think it's appealing. I don't know if I'll continue to do it forever, but there are some instances where I really think it, it serves to uh, make the designs pop. Now we're getting to the fun part. Uh, I'm about to start adding my color. Uh, this is my palette, and this right here is my paint sock. And if you paint and you don't have a paint sock, you, you really mustn't be a painter until you get that sorted out. Uh, I'll be using some acrylic inks for this. Uh, I've been using, you know, acrylic ink, watercolor, a lot of different stuff. Generally, people tend to use uh, acrylic ink for tattoo designs because it's very similar to tattoo ink and the pigments are pretty similar as well. Uh, first, obviously, we start with the black and generally I, I come to a, a moment during the creation of each sheet where I've done the black around the entire, you know, every single design and I question, does this look okay as a black and white sheet? If the designs look fine as black and white, you know, it's hard to tell yourself like, oh, I'm just gonna stop here with the black and white. But generally that is a good benchmark to see if you've created some good tattoo designs. If it looks fine with just black ink, it will look amazing with some sparing use of color. And obviously you wanna use very bold color. That, that, that is generally how, how you wanna take a tattoo design. But yeah, as you can see, this is just adding a lot of dimension and the designs really start to come together when you add the black. Now, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fill 20 minutes of just talking about painting flash. And I think uh, a lot of people have been wondering maybe where I've been, why I haven't been making videos. I know I don't have a giant following or anything, but it is a comment that I've seen uh, many times, you know, in my hiatus, if that's what you wanna call it. You know, you know, people have been asking where, uh, where are you, and like, what, what are you doing? Why aren't you making videos? And, and I'll just want to address what's been going on in my life specifically since uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Oh, you mentioned it. You mentioned COVID nineteen. Arrest him. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I hate when people mention it, but 
it is a reality and it is relevant to every single person's life, uh, whether they want to admit it or not. So uh, yeah, I mean, since the pandemic, my, my artistic output has actually skyrocketed, but partially I think that has to do with the fact that I, you know, I am wifed up, so to speak. I have a beautiful significant other who really is a, a huge motivator for me um, in creating my artwork because it is very easy as an artist to feel like you are constantly wasting your time. Uh, you know, artwork can feel very frivolous and it is quite tedious, especially with tattoo flash a lot of the time. It, it's very routine based and, you know, you, you get into the flow of doing the same thing over and over, even though it's different designs, it's the same process and it's the same, uh, you know, routine you're doing for each piece. Uh, and it, it can feel very discouraging uh, just making sheet after sheet after sheet um, but hopefully this is going to lead into some sort of career for me and that, that's what I'm really uh, banking on and that's why I'm putting so much effort into it. Uh, and here I, I just want to bring you guys along with me uh, on that journey because I figure why not share what I'm doing because I'm doing it anyways. And I, you know, I have a couple thousand followers on this, on this YouTube channel so I figure maybe some of y'all might be interested in this and maybe if, you know, if we're lucky we can pick up a few extra people who, uh, you know, either are looking for tips on their artwork or maybe they want to become an apprentice too and we can just share in that journey because uh, you know I'm not going to give up this pursuit uh, you know of my chosen career uh, until I get it you know I, I'm trying to be very dedicated and it, I've never been so committed to something as I am to you know my artwork at the moment and it feels good it, it feels like a pretty adult thing I feel like I've been growing up a lot with my artwork even though it's hard to say that you're growing as an artist especially if you're doing traditional tattoos because a lot of the time you're copying other designs from other people or you know it's, it's just a stripped back aesthetic so you're not really flexing your artistic skills so much as you're flexing your craftsmanship with uh, your flash sheets and generally I think that's an important thing to actually touch on the fact that tattooing equally as much as it's an art it is a craft and it, it is, you know, it's a blue collar craft, you know, it's been socially uh, deviantized for decades and decades and decades It's recently becoming cool and normalized to actually have tattoos. But for the longest time, you know, tattooers were not seen as artists by the art world or by themselves. I don't think for a long time, a lot of people just consider it, you know, sort of a seedy career and it's definitely a, a craft. It's definitely a craft. So I'm trying to approach this uh, road to apprenticeship with a lot of respect for the craft of tattooing because you can paint and paint and paint as much as you want, but until you actually get into a tattoo shop, it is very uh, arrogant and unfair to assume that you know anything about tattooing as a career. Here, what I'm doing with this red, I've, I've actually mixed my, uh, my acrylic ink with a little bit of scarlet uh, gouache, which is like sort of in between watercolor and acrylic paint and I've done that just to brighten up my red a little bit because I've recently realized that on these sheets where I'm doing the coffee stain my red is a little bit deeper than I'd like it to be and I, you know I just wanted to be really bold so I added the gouache and it actually uh, kind of makes for a little bit of a problem because the gouache is opaque and so when you go over a black line of ink on the paper with the gouache it sort of covers the gouache a little bit and that's an issue you don't really see with the acrylic ink and that's why I would recommend painting with the acrylic ink it's it's a little bit more forgiving when it comes to going over those lines and trying not to uh, you know lose that strong black outline that a tattoo design really needs in my opinion in order to be bold and readable and strong but yeah just talking about my life in general you know I'm, I'm getting close to the end of school I'm probably gonna graduate hopefully fingers crossed we'll be graduating college in August and then you know, the pursuit of an apprenticeship really begins there, although I have been working at it steadily. Uh, you know, as many days of the week as I can be working on my artwork, I try to at least put a few hours into it because, uh, you know, there's a saying that the more energy you put into something, the more energy you will get out of that thing. And, I, you know, I'm just trying to set myself up for success when it comes to my artwork because really it is my main uh, marketable skill is like pretty much the only thing that I'm like better at than most people in the population. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not trying to brag there. What I mean is it's, it's one of the only things that I actually, you know, can stand my ground and I'm a pretty competitive artist. Um, this, this sounds douchey the way I'm saying it, but I'm not trying to be douchey. I'm just saying 
you know, there are a lot of things in life, for instance, math, for instance, uh, you know, interpersonal skills, for instance, you know, just, there's a number of things, most things I'm terrible at. This is the one thing I found that I'm not terrible at. So I'm trying to put as many eggs in this basket as I possibly can, uh, as the metaphor goes. And I'm just really trying to uh, build this build this thing for myself so that I can live the life that I want to live and also uh, just live the life that will allow me to provide the most people with the most happiness, uh, which I think, you know, this this is the avenue through which I'll be able to do that. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm not some great guitar player, but playing in a band is like a way of, you know, giving people joy in their life. And this, you know, I, I ha I've even stopped playing guitar really because I, I've been so focused on trying to improve with my artwork and trying to really nail down a super solid schedule of uh, just always having an iron in the fire, so to speak, always having a project to work on. And, you know, this, this project recently, this video itself has taken me like a long time to make compared to, you know, a flash sheet normally takes me maybe one, two, three days max to paint the flashy. I did this one in one day, but it's it's taken me forever to make this actual video. You forget how much effort actually goes into it uh, when, when you don't do it for a long time. But here at the end of the video, I kind of want to just talk about goals and I want to, you know, encourage anyone out there who has a, you know, a very strong path in their, in their life that they're trying to follow. Uh, you know, you have my support wholeheartedly I, and I, I hope that you can accomplish whatever it is you're trying to accomplish uh, as long as you know you're not hurting yourself or anyone else I, I think it's very very healthy to have a goal in your mind and in your life uh, whether it's a short-term goal or a long-term goal that's broken up into a, you know a series of short-term goals I think it's it's been very influential in a positive way for my mental health specifically um, having my artwork always as a bastion of self-worth and you know, you don't want to get too tied up in that, and that's maybe a topic for a whole other video, but, um, you know, I, I think it's been overall very healthy for me to continue pushing myself every single day with this, and I want to encourage anyone out there with a dream, no matter how, you know, uh, unrealistic it may seem to you, uh, you know, it, it's totally worth trying, and, it, you know, it's very cliche to hear the whole thing about, you know, you miss every single shot you don't take, uh, but, you know, the fact of the matter is life is fucking scary, man. And it, you're not always guaranteed to get what you want. You're not guaranteed to get the job that you feel like you deserve. And you're not guaranteed anything in life. So if, if you find something that you really think is worth sacrificing, you know, your free time for, absolutely, in my opinion, you should. And it, it is very imperative uh, to constantly be working towards something. I don't think it's ever good to be content. That's, you know, that's never going to get you anywhere if, if, what you want is to get somewhere. You have to go to that place. So there, there is an imperative activity uh, associated with whatever it is you're trying to do. Like if you're trying to become an engineer, you got to get your good grades. You got to stay through school. You got to graduate. And for instance, if you want to become a tattooer, you have to just be dedicated and paint your flash. And you know, you just have to stick with it. No matter how discouraging life can seem, it's just super important to maintain that PMA or positive mental attitude and just really push yourself as hard as you can because you, you'll never know how far you can take something unless you try. So yeah, I just want to throw that out there. Anything that you want to do, if you think it will bring joy to your life, bring stability to your life, you know, anything that you want to do, whether it's getting a yoga practice together, staying on a good diet, uh, you know, just staying with your artistic practice and being disciplined, uh, you know, I just want you to know you have my full vocal support and I just I want everyone to achieve the goals that they want to achieve because uh, even just making this day-to-day -day progress it, it's very satisfying and it, it's very enriching to your life so I, I wish that upon everyone and I'll take this time to uh, say you know if you if you don't already follow me on Instagram my Instagram handle is mosh pit Morgan no spaces no caps no nothing no underscores uh, I really, really appreciate it if you could follow me over there because that is indeed where most of my artwork sees the light of day. Also, if you don't mind, please subscribe to this YouTube channel because it would be a cool thing for me to uh, foster and maintain, hopefully. Yay, buddy!